Welcome to the 1970s. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got a different one a day, or a little bit of a different one a day. I have got two beers that I'm going to review, but I'm going to do something to them. Don't worry, it's nothing kinky. I have was out and about the other day, I think it was in Lidl's, and they do this stuff, right? Banks's Amber Bitter. Now, it's not great, but it's cheap. It's a pound something, I think it's about pound 20 a bottle, but I have heard in certain places that this has been on offer for ooh, a pound a bottle, sometimes 99 pence, so that is not bad. And I picked one up and I thought, I'll review it. It's a bitter, it's brewed by Marston's, nothing special, I don't think anyway. Today, I don't know whether you, which video is going to go out first, it may be the unboxing video or it may be this one, I don't know yet, but I picked up some of this. It's the Man's Brown Ale, I'm sure you've seen that, that is legendary stuff. I got it from Beers of Europe, but they do sell it, and I have seen it in Asda and Morrison's. Not sure whether they still sell it, but I have seen it there, I know that for a fact, and on the last visit to Morrison's, I'm sure they still had it. It wasn't in the small bottles, though. it was in the big bottles. But the reason I'm doing it is because I like to revisit the old beers that you could get in the pubs in Britain in the 70s and the 80s. Now, I've already done light and bitter, or sorry, light and lager, and I thought I'll do another one. Now, there's a beer that used to be around, not so much in London. I don't remember it being in London. But it had the same principle as the light and lager and the light and bitter. But it was called a brown split and it was a mix, a half and half mix. I'll get onto that in a minute. A half and half mix of bitter and brown ale. Now there was a few brown ales around at the time. Of course, Newcastle Brown was around. But from what I've been told and from what I've read, Man's was the most popular ale or brown ale to mix it with. So what I want to do is I want to, can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Yeah, do you know what? Fuck it, I will. I'll, do, I'll take a little bit from each. I'll sample them. I'll give you a, a, a rough indication of what they taste like. And then I'll mix them. And then I'll tell you what a brown split looks like. So I've got two... I've got two Teku glasses here, or one Teku and one, what are they called, Rastel glasses? I don't know what those are called, but that's a Teku glass. I'll just pour it into there. I'll pour a little bit of each. I'll sample them and I'll let you know what they taste like. Um, of course, as I said, they're both from Marston's. There's nothing on the brew sheet of what hops are being used, what malt is being used in either. I'm assuming that they're British hops, British malt, because it's basically two British beers. So let's try the the Banks' Amber. Banks, of course, they do a mild as well. I've not tried that. I'll see if I can get hold of that, but that doesn't seem to be too forthcoming. Certainly not in the um, in the supermarkets. There's the cap there, by the way. Uh, on the nose, what are we getting from the Banks' Bitter? Yeah, it smells like a bitter. Faint, hoppy bitterness, and some some caramel malt. Very, very light aromas. Not not very strong. That's what it looks like in the glass. Now they do say it's an amber bitter, so that's what you get in. And on the nose at the glass, let's uh, give it a swirl round first. 
yeah, earthy tones coming out of there now. Earthy bitterness. There's a very, very slight oniony smell coming from that as, as well. And caramel malt. Now the onion isn't alarming me too much because you do find that in certain hops, very fresh hops have that, and there's certain types of hops that have onion aromas. And it's not big, but it's there. And I've got a cat trying to get up. Get down you, you little git. Mm. Smells okay. Let's give it a go. Mm. Doesn't taste great. There's a big caramel aftertaste. Three point eight percent weak body, and it does. It reminds me of a bitter from the seventies. Now this is three point eight percent, and it should be noted that there wasn't any beer over five percent available out of the keg in the nineteen seventies. Sure, you could get bottles like a gold label barley wine, and I think there was a couple of others that were over the 5%. It wasn't until they started getting the foreign stuff in, i.e. the Stella Artois, who Iron Coop, I think, brought in, and you also had the Löwenbrau from West Germany, as it was called at the time. They were over 5%. Stella, of course, was 5.5%, I think, at the time. And I think the Löwenbrau was roughly the same as well. I mean, and they used to really fuck people up and I think this is where Lager's got his bad name from because Lager's was brewed in, in the 1890s in the UK but it never really caught on, it was termed a woman's drink and I suppose that stigma sort of stuck with it and normally they'd add a bit of lime to it as well and Lager and lime of course was a woman's drink for years but this stuff, it's not great There's earthy hot bitterness British hop bitterness, a caramel to it. It ain't great, it's a typical Marston's effort. Uh, I could probably drink a couple of bottles of this, but I just, it's very weak and, I wouldn't say watery, but it's weak bodied. But it does remind me of a bitter from the 1970s, as you know, as you would expect. But it's okay, it's drinkable. No great shakes. Very cheap, for the money, I probably would have given that about six, seven out of ten. Yeah. The brown ale, the man's brown ale, not the woman's brown ale. Let's get that up. This is 2.8%. I've heard stories about this. Well, I've never tasted this before. I've seen it. I remember it when I was a kid. There's the cap. It's just got a man's... Men's Brewery, brown ale, sorry, men's brown ale. Originally, that was brewed by a company called Ushers. Marsons have taken it over now, and yeah, they're still producing it. So what are we getting on the nose here? Mmm. Faint bitterness. But I'm really struggling to get anything out of there. Toffee, faint, bitter toffee. Let's get a little bit into the glass, not a lot. And there it is. Very dark, almost black. Or is it? Well, it is dark, put it that way. It's like a very, like dark mild, that's what it looks like. Oh yeah, now this, cool. That doesn't smell nice at all. It's like a, a bitter toffee. And a vegetable type aroma to it. Mm. Let's give it a taste. Wow, very sweet.
Mmm, it is very sweet. Hardly any aftertaste at all. Very, very faint caramel, tinged with a little bit of biscuit in there, but it don't, that really doesn't smell good. It's the sweetness is what surprises me because it adds a slightly bitter type aroma to it, but the flavor, I'm still getting the sweetness in it now, like a malty type sweetness. So that's man's brown ale, nothing to be, you know, writing home about. Slightly better than the Newcastle brown ale. I refuse to fucking review that. Um, from what I've been told, the Newcastle Brown wasn't used as a mix for a brown split. Now, I'll just get this into the glass so you can see it. I'm just gonna pour roughly what you'd get in a pub, right? Usually, the pub would fill it up to about there. What would it be? Maybe it might even be a little bit more. You'd get about that much in it. And that'd be pulled from a pump. Now, what would normally happen is you'd get either a tight bastard or someone who was reasonably generous, but you'd get more than half a pint. And as I said before in the video about light, light and lager, everybody drank these type of drinks because you got more for your money. That was the only reason, right? And it was one of them things where it became popular because you'd get more drink, you'd drink a lot of it, you'd leave a little bit in the bottle because you couldn't get it all out of the bottle. And then you'd be down to about there, you'd have drunk that, and then you'd just pour the rest of it in there and you'd drink it. I do recall having a conversation with a fella just the other day on a West Ham forum. He was an old landlord. And he said they used to do light and bitter all the time. And he said, uh, the weights and measures people, they used to be, that used to be a thing in the United Kingdom. They used to come round and they check, and the way they got round that people or the, um, because apparently it's a crime to underfill somebody's glass, but also it's a crime to overfill it as well. And what they suggested was pouring in the bottle first and then topping it up. And when they started doing that, they said they just killed it completely because people weren't getting more for their money. In fact, they were probably getting less because they'd be ahead on the bottle and that would stay and then they just top that up with with ale when you you were basically not getting a little bit more for your money so that's why that died out so there we have it there's the bitter in the glass all right i'm just going to give it another bit of a bit of a swig mm, yeah it, it, it's very very insipid not really much aroma there's a little head on that and very very mild carbonation so it is an amber colour, as they say, though. Right, so take note of that colour, all right, because that is going to change very, very soon. Now, here's your man's brown ale. Right, this is a proper... I've heard this was popular up north in the Midlands and down south in um, in the West Country, in Bristol. I remember the first time I've, I ever heard the word or the term brown split was in a book I was reading about a Bristol Rovers football hooligan and that's what that was his drink of choice um, but let's get this into the glass now and that's what it looked like and in fact it don't look like a bad ruby ale that's giving it a really nice color if I poured that out of a decent bottle I'll be well impressed with that it might look a bit dark on the um, on the camera, but I'm holding that up to the light. I don't think you're going to be able to see that, but there is a slight ruby sort of tone to it when you hold it up to the light. And there, you've got a little bit left in the bottle. Now, as I said, you'd probably have a little bit left over, you'd have a full pint, and that would be it. So, a brown split. Let's have some. Yeah, and do you know what? This really didn't taste good at all. This 
this Banks Amber bit. Well, I'm not saying it didn't taste good. It was just fucking boring and average. This stuff tasted quite sweet, not great. Combining the two, that now tastes quite nice. It tastes like quite an, a nice ruby. You've got quite a bit of caramel malt on the finish. It's not as bitter as it was. There is that the sweetness from this stuff has made it <clears throat> calm down on the bitterness front. And it's not as sweet either. The two have sort of cancelled each other out. But what they've left is quite a nice flavoursome beer. To be honest, it does lack body. I will say that. There ain't a lot of body on this. But the mouthfeel is super smooth. So you've got, yeah, sort of a sweet, a sweet-ish, not very sweet, just very slightly sweet, caramel malt. Very slight touch of toffee malt, not a lot. And then you've got like an earthy hop bitterness. It does taste, I mean, that just tastes to me. It's very similar to an out beer. That's what I'm being put in mind of. The sweetness from that brown ale has given it the sweetness you get. To be honest, it's not as malt heavy as an out beer. You don't get that huge malt. It's, this is the malt is very toned down on this, but it is quite nice. I have to say, it's not bad. I could, I could see quite a few of these. And we got a cat here now. What the fuck? You're standing on a laptop. For fuck's sake, he's ginger as well. Fucking gingers. I used to hate gingers till I realised I was one when I grew a beard. Um, yeah, this is nice. I could drink quite a few of these. Now, I wouldn't be going out my way at, for these. The flavour isn't massive. But if you were sessioning something, I could, I could drink quite a few of these. And the ABV would be quite low as well. So, you know, you'd be quids in. That's nice. That's your brown split. Trouble is, if you walked into a pub and asked for a brown split, they'd look at you as if you got two heads. Nobody sells them. I don't even, even con it doesn't even cross my fucking mind to go into a pub and ask for a light and bitter or a light and lager now because you just, I, I haven't seen light ale in a pub in a long, long time. I, I honestly can't remember. I remember, I remember, oh, man, this is going back a few years. We was at a pub in Brixton. We were going to see the Dropkick Murphys, the band, the Dropkick Murphys. And we was in, it's all right, that's Percy licking his bollocks. It's not, nothing to do, <laughs> there's nothing under the wall going down, down there. Um, there's, uh, there's a pub in Brixton, I can't remember the name of it, but it's proper old school. I think it's an Irish run pub. And uh, they don't even, they don't even have um, fizzy water on the thing, they have bottles of it. And uh, that's how old school it is. And it's proper, they've got like, a public bar and a saloon bar. But they had light ale, but that's going back a few years now. That's at least seven, seven or eight years ago. But that's the last time I remember seeing it. But um, yeah, brown split. That's a first for me. So if you want to do a little experimentation, get yourself, I know they sell both of these in Morrison's. I think they do it in Asda's and all. Get yourself down there, mix the two up, see what you think. And remember, ginger cats will always show you their arsehole.